che non stava <ride> thanks, thanks a lot, Pina. Grazie mille for this kind invitation. I'm very happy to, to have the possibility to talk uh, uh, in, in, uh, in your seminar a second time. Um, so I let me uh, just uh, say that, uh, so uh, uh, the, the title is this one, so non-perturbative fingerprints of many electron uh, physics and their surprising implication. And uh, before I start, oh, sorry, I have probably, um, let me thanks the, all the, the guy involved in, uh, in, in this project, uh, which really did great work in, the, in, the, in, the, in these years. Um, and especially young comes first, uh, my students, uh, PhD uh, students, Patrick Kalupa, uh, and uh, my master students, Matthias Reitner, um, and uh, also uh, as, at the postdoc, at that time at the postdoc level, but now much more, Thomas Schaefer, uh, who is now a group leader in Max Planck Institute, and uh, Lorenzo De Rey, who is working uh, in uh, Georgetown University with Jim Friedrich. And then also many other cooperation between Tubing and L'Aquila uh, and Würzburg uh, uh, and Stuttgart uh, of uh, uh, people that are probably also here in the audience. Uh, it was a very fruitful cooperation, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, in order to uh, illustrate the new result, uh, it's worth to start from uh, uh, from a flashback from what uh, uh, was the status when I have given my uh, talk at this nice conference uh, who was organized by Francesco, Ariane and, and Pina uh, in, uh, in Toulouse in 2017 about the Green Function Method, this check on workshop, where I uh, uh, was invited to give a talk about the connection between vertex divergences and multiple solutions. Uh, um, I even dig out uh, for making this connection some old slide, all the slides from that time. Um, I think all the difficulties that we are seeing, uh, seeing here are uh, deeply rooted in the, in the true nature of the many electron problem. Uh, so in the many electron problem where the problem the challenge to treat a lot of uh, um, interacting fermions, uh, and the high number of degrees of freedom, of course, suggests to use uh, a formalism uh, which we call the one of quantum field theory, which is used also in, uh, in QED or in high energy physics. But at the same time, uh, different from QED, we don't have uh, a priori a clear control parameter to justify the expansion and the formalism, like the Feynman diagrammatic formalism, that on the other end uh, we want to use. Uh, if any how we, 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 we go this way, uh, one can, uh, so, so to say, um, identify two main rules to, to, uh, to uh, deal with uh, uh, approximation uh, or to devise an approximation. One is uh, uh, the Latin word formalism, uh, which is uh, uh, particularly useful if you want to build up conserving approximation. And the other one uh, are formalism related uh, uh, on crossing, relying on crossing symmetry, which try to keep safe the uh, Pauli principle. Um, and uh, interestingly, uh, if you enter in the non-perturbative regime, you have problem that uh, are become evident in both cases. So somehow these are the, uh, for the uh, first kind of approximation, the multivalueness of a Latin word function, which was nicely illustrated by Walter in the talk before. And instead for approach, approaches based on cross symmetry, the problem are uh, uh, created by the divergences of the irreducible vertex function, which is something that we just met by chance by making calculation in dynamical mean field theory, in which it was observed that for certain value of the parameter in the Hubbard model, the irreducible vertex of the beta separator equation in the chart channel was diverging. And later on, it was even shown that uh, th there were many of these divergences. For instance, this is the phase diagram of the Hubbard model. And you see that the mot Hubbard uh, uh, transition at uh, uh, intermediate value of u is surrounded from many lines where the vertex function the irreducible vertex function diverges. And the subject of my talk of uh, 2017 uh, in Toulouse was uh, exactly uh, related to the fact that uh, we were able to 
demonstrate that the two manifestation of the breakdown of the perturbation theory were actually equivalent aspect of the same uh, um, uh, phenomenon, so to say, that was the breakdown of perturbation theory. So we, we were able to demonstrate uh, that uh, this, uh, so that uh, the crossing between physical and physical solution, uh, for instance, in a Hubbard atom, but or even in DMT, were occurring at the, exactly at the same parameter for which the irreducible vector divergences were found. And later on, we also had an analytic uh, explanation why this was exactly the case. So why the two, uh, the two violation or breakdown uh, manifestation of the perturbative expansion were actually the same uh, issue seen in different contexts. Um, of course, as uh, Walter said, this creates uh, several problems for the approaches based on one or the other uh, uh, path. So uh, this is uh, the case for uh, all iterative or self-consistent uh, bold approaches, uh, diagrammatic Monte Carlo, but also nest cluster scheme, but uh, for what concerns the multivalueness, but also the divergence of the irreducible vertices, of course, create problem to, in, uh, for all approaches based on parquet uh, formalism, like uh, the dynamical vector approximation or the recently introduced quadrilex. But uh, um, today I don't want to deal with the details of the approaches, which is an ongoing, very important discussion in the field. But I want to, I, I would like to try to, to give a first answer, although approximate to the question that they were posed uh, at the end of my talk in, uh, in Toulouse. And the first question is, what is the origin I mean, the physical origin of this breakdown of the perturbation theory. So it's just formalism, or there is something behind. And in order to do this from our perspective, of course, we have to learn how to read the physics from the two particle object, what typically we are not used to do from the generalized two particle object, and identify the fingerprints of this physics and to see if they are related to the, to the divergences that we are seeing. And second, second question, although I don't know if I will have time, maybe this will be postponed in another case, let's see. Uh, are there then relevant physical consequences beyond the origin itself that this uh, uh, neon perturbative manifestation uh, can induce in the, in, the, in the physical system? Well, let's start uh, with the first question. So in some sense, my goal here would be to learn how to read the physics from the two particle quantities at the same level of coincidence that we have for the moment at the one particle level. We know, all of us know that the one particle level description uh, in terms of the green function format is Formally, is based on the one particle dust and green function, which relates the green function to the self energy. And we have a high degree of confidence to deal with this object. For instance, even if I give you a, a DMT solution for two self energy, you will be immediately see or recognize that the green one is metallic and the, and the, and the, and the orange one is insulating. Simply by looking at the low frequency part of it, from which you can even extract uh, quantitative information about your system, like, for instance, the renormalization factor, the scattering rate, the spectral function in the limit of, uh, at, at the Fermi level. And uh, what we want to do, to do the same at the two-particle level. And therefore, if you go to the two-particle level, the analogous equation would be the local uh, in the, the case of DMT, beta salpeter equation, which is written here diagrammatically and, uh, of course, in terms of the, um, uh, of the, uh, of the analytical expression. Uh, here, I want just to stress that we concentrate for the moment on the omega equal zero case, so uh, uh, on the static case. Uh, and therefore, all these functions are can be considered matrix in the Matsubara frequency space. And you can recognize that, for instance, the generalized susceptibility 
in one of the channel, let's say the chart channel, is given by uh, a, a term, which is uh, this called bubble term, which is nothing else than the description of the propagation of one electron and one hole, independent one of each other, and then a vertex correction part, which uh, describe all possible interaction between this particle and, and their hole, and which plays the role of the, our self-energy at the one particle level. For this reason, if you want to understand the property of this vertex function, and we want to calculate it, we have, we can do like uh, for the Dyson equation, we can simply invert the Bethe's Arpeter equation and thus define the irreducible vertex. In that case, you see immediately that if you are interested to, uh, to understand where this uh, uh, matrix of which define the vertex diverges, the problem should arise from the inversion of the two particle generalized susceptibility, because of course the bubble term, which is the multiplication of two beam function cannot be any problem. And in this respect, of course, uh, using a spectral representation, so rewriting this matrix in terms of eigenvalue and eigenvector will provide a very useful representation because the vertex divergences here will correspond to a singularity of this matrix. So to a point where one of the eigenvalues becomes zero, cross zero, for instance, going from positive to negative. And therefore, the generalized susceptibility chi charge or chi spin will be our quantity of interest. Uh, and this looks like, like this, so to say, if you look in Matsubara frequency space, you have two fermionic frequencies and you will have a structure in frequency space, uh, uh, which we code in this co typical color coding, red uh, represent positive values and blue negative values. And the question is, how do we relate this to the physics? Well, of course, the mathematical relation is known. If you sum up all the entries or, or the frequency entries of this matrix, overall Matsubara frequencies, properly normalized, you get the static response in charge or in spin, whatever you want, of your system. So you have just to sum up over nu nu prime this matrix, and you get the, the corresponding physical response. And we will try to, to, to understand from the behavior of the physical response, uh, what is the meaning of the structure that we see in the generalized one. And in order to do this, uh, we uh, started, we just scratched the, first, the, the surface of this problem by considering one of the easiest uh, uh, representation, though dynamical one, of the or modelization of the many electron physics. The one of the Anderson Curie model, because this model has the advantage to be exactly solvable. Um, and also, uh, let me stress that uh, this was how the Anderson Curie model behaves, was uh, one of the questions that I, I got during the, uh, so to say, the, at the end of the conference 2017, Tina and, and uh, Francesco and Walter probably may remember. And at the time I had only preliminary result by Patrick. Now we have the definite one. And the, the, the impurity model that we consider is in the, let's say in the relative wide band limit at all filling for which the physical ingredients are very clear. At large U, you will have a local magnetic moment formation and then at lower temperature, a condo screening. And more importantly, answering to the question, to the old question of 2017, the Anderson Curie model, even in its simplicity, has still the problem of the vertex divergences. This is uh, are the first uh, five lines where the irreducible vertex uh, on the impurity side diverges, if you invert the Peter Sapeter equation, and you see that you have a red line and orange line of the related to different divergences. And uh, uh, in the red line, uh, there is a divergence in the chart channel, while in the orange line, you see that uh, there is uh, divergences in both particle, particle and chart channel. Let me stress that, uh, uh, answer to the question, that if you go to very low temperature, you see that uh, you don't have the divergences tend to disappear. They simply go down to a finite value of U, and, they, and, they, and, and we could, uh, 
uh, actually Patrick made a very good job to make an extrapolation and find even a scaling, which really demonstrate that the, the U value, the extrapolated U value is really, really very stable. Um, then let's try to go to connect to the physics. In order to do so, we start by uh, recap the, the physics, which is at play. So we will consider the magnetic response, which is the typical one uh, for this kind of system, and the charge response. For the magnetic response, uh, we also multiply it by the temperature in such a way that uh, the local moment regime is simply uh, uh, identified by a plateau because this corresponds to the Curie Weiss behavior. And let's consider first the gray line, because the gray line is the atomic limit, or in the notation of the Lucia group, the Hubbard atom result. And you see that if you reduce the temperature, you get in the magnetic channel to a nice plateau, which is simply the local moment of the atomic limit. And you see also that uh, this corresponds to a strong suppression of the charge of the static uh, charge susceptibility, because of course, if you have a pure local moment in the upper atom, your charge doesn't fluctuate any longer. If you do the same in the under model, you see that uh, in a, if you reduce the temperature, you still see a certain point, a plateau here with a relatively large value of the magnetic moment, which is indeed associated with a decrease of the charge susceptibility as in the atomic limit. But of course, here there is more because if you decrease further the temperature at a certain point, your magnetic moment gets screened here. And then you have a sort of revival of the charge fluctuations. Yeah. So these are the ingredients at play. But now, and this can be uh, recasted in this uh, general phase diagram of which we will later um, investigate this uh, uh, line, uh, this uh, pretty large value of U, where we are sure that we are in the, in the, uh, in the magnetic moment regime, and then we enter later in the condo regime. And let me stress uh, uh, in this case that uh, the condo temperature here could be measured in a sort of conventional way by making calculation in the magnetic sector and uh, applying the typical scaling with respect to renormalization group solution of the, uh, of, the condo, of the condo system. And so we have a, a very solid benchmark for this condo temperature. And now we want to understand how to read the physics from the two particle quantities. And in this case, uh, I have to say, we start really from the very basics. We consider first the non-interacting case uh, in which we have only the bubble term. And if we have only the bubble term, what happens is that you have only two independent green functions, and therefore your um, generalized charge susceptibility is nothing else than uh, a diagonal, which is proportional to the square of the green function um, uh, in, the, in the frequency spaces, and uh, which is uh, positive, typically larger at uh, small frequency and then decaying. Then this is very clear. Let's then make a step further. Then we add the vector correction back. But first, we, re we stay in the perturbative regime, which in our uh, case means that we consider the high temperature regime. So temperature which, uh, uh, for which the first mass bar frequency is larger, slightly larger than you. And then in order to, to look at the result, we consider what we get for this quantity from two different approximations, which cover the two different extreme cases. The random phase approximation, which is perturbative, and the atomic limit, which is uh, non-perturbative. But for this, in this case, we see that the random phase is uh, essentially not that different from the non-interacting case. You have a positive diagonal with small off-diagonal vertex correction, which, which are however, really very small. So is, this is just a decoration of the non-perturbative, of, uh, of the bubble term result. And for this regime, if you look at the atomic limit, you see essentially the same. This is not surprising because in the perturbative regime, even the excess solution of the anderson curie model is coincides with this situation. Then in order to understand something more, we have to make a 
a, a, a step, a major step forward, we go into the non-perturbative regime, into the local moment regime, as shown also in the phase diagram on the, uh, on the, on the right here. And if we do so for a much smaller value of U, then we see that now the random phase and the atomic limit solution uh, has a very, very different uh, qualitative feature. So the random phase remain more or less as it was before, while the atomic limit solution has got a completely different structure with a strongly suppressed diagonal term, which becomes even negative with respect to the perturbative case. And I want to elaborate a bit more on this because this is a, the essential uh, difference, uh, because we get uh, that uh, up to a scale of order of U in the atomic limit case, the, 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 the structure is really very, very different with respect to the perturbative one. And if you go even at a lower temperature, you, you can really appreciate how different they are. So they look like a sort of negative image one of the other. So with the, the R RPA perturbative uh, uh, calculation being dominated by positive diagonal while the upper atom being dominated by a negative diagonal. Yeah. And this has a di direct connection with the physics, because if you, if you plot the temperature dependence of the charge, the physical charge response, uh, the static one as a function of temperature, you see that at, a, at high temperature in the perturbative regime, the RPA and the atomic limit behaves more or less the same, while at a low temperature, of course, they completely differ. And this large value that you get in, run, in random phase is of course related to the positive, strongly positive diagonal that you have here, while the suppression of the atomic limit phase comes from the negative diagonal. And let me, let me stress that uh, this, somehow these two words are really, are really two different separate words in some sense, because if we look at these plots from our perspective of the vertex divergences, it's clear that this matrix with dominated by positive diagonal entries has all eigenvalues which are, spo are positive, while the other matrix, which uh, is dominated by a negative diagonal, has all eigenvalues which are negative. And in order to go from one situation to the other, you have to flip some or even more of these eigenvalues and these are nothing else. So that the vertex divergences. So you have to cross the vertex divergences to get uh, the physics, the suppression physics of the atomic limit. Uh, summarizing this, we can say that if we have, if we increase U, essentially we increase the correlation between the up and the down screen sector. And this enters differently in the magnetic and the charge channel. The magnetic channel is enhanced while the charge channel is suppressed. However, for reasons related to the Pauli principle, the suppression occurs in the charge channel mostly in, into the diagonal term, which becomes strongly negative. And so we can say that uh, this negative diagonal that we observe very clearly is nothing else than the, the fingerprints or the, or if you want, the non-perturbative image of the local magnetic moment onto the charge channel. And of course, if you create this, this fingerprints is responsible for getting your, your vertex dependency, or if you prefer to break down the perturbation theory. Um, of course, this was done considering the extreme case. Then the question is what happens if we, if we go to the real calculation of the atomic, uh, of the Anderson Curie model that we can solve exactly. And we compare with the result of the atom for the three different regime. Of course, in the perturbative regime, nothing happens. Then you, you get essentially the same, essentially metallic physics in both cases. In the local moment regime, however, you, you see that uh, you, you, you get also in the, in the Anderson Curie model, a similar feature with a negative diagonal as you had in the uh, atomic limit, only with a smaller extension in, uh, in frequency space, which is due to the effect of the hybridization. However, if you reduce further your, um, uh, your temperature, then the Anderson-Purin model 
the yes again from, from, the, from the upper atom because you get a more complicated structure, which is worth to be analyzed in more detail. And we are doing this in a moment. So this is the zoom of the low temperature result of the Anderson degree model. And you see that uh, there is uh, an intermediate region where you still have a negative diagonal, which we associated or which in, we interpret to be the fingerprints of the local moment formation because they ch suppress the charge fluctuation. But at the same time, you, you get an inner core where the, 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 um, the frequency are turned back to positive. And this is happens because of the condo screening. And in this case, that means that uh, you have essentially, um, uh, at, at the condo scale, your generalized susceptibility get a sort of onion structure. So you have an external part, which is always perturbative because the frequency are larger than you. Then you have an intermediate part where you see the effect of your condo of your local moment. And then you have an inner part, an inner core where you see that your local moment is screened. Given that is the case, of course, it's clear that uh, the part of the, the fingerprint of the local moment are responsible for the vertex divergences. While the, 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 the inner core where the, 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 the diagonal is turned back to positive uh, is of course responsible for a slight mitigation of the vertex divergence, which is associated with this ba small bending at low temperature. Because the inner part of the matrix, if you consider only the inner part of the matrix, you, you, you get that your, your uh, diagonal is, is back to positive. But of course, if you try to invert your matrix as a whole, you will still have the problem that you have negative uh, um, entries at intermediate frequency, and therefore the vertex divergences remains, are only mitigated, but they do not disappear. However, it makes in, it makes a lot of sense also to try to understand what happens in the very low frequency region, because uh, in some sense, as we did in, uh, in the one particle case, one can think that uh, the low, very low frequency region may entail some quantitative uh, uh, information about the physics of your system, like it was the case for, for the, so to say, uh, for the uh, Z factor or, or the scattering rate in the one part of the function. And we do so in the perturbative case, if we make a zoom only on the, on the, on the smallest matrix that we have, which is associated with the positive and negative value of the smallest mass bar frequency pi t, we get, uh, the typical perturbative structure. Then in the local moment regime, this is of course reversed as we discussed, but then in the low temperature regime, the diagonal entry are positive again and their value rises. And at a certain point, they, their value will become equal to the value of the uh, of diagonal term. And quite impressively, this happens at the condo temperature at least for this value of you that we have selected here. And so we, we wonder if this may be indicating that this can be used as a new criterion to identify the condo scale, but now in the charge sector. And actually we, we try to verify this for other value of you. So we consider only the smallest uh, entries of, the, of our generalized matrix. And we check the point in the phase diagram where they were equal. And this were the result, the result. And one sees that uh, starting to the point where it makes sense to, to, to talk about a local moment, the agreement between this criterion and the standard criterion for TK is essentially perfect. Here is the, the zoom on the log scale. So it's really giving the same number. It's happening at the same temperature. So this is a, a, another interesting information. Even more interesting if one think that uh, this is also all beyond uh, the single impurity Anderson model. For instance, uh, it happens also in the periodic Anderson model. 
and even in the Hubbard model solved by mean of dynamical mean field theory. Although in that case, the meaning of the condo scale is different because there the self-consistent Anderson theory model is somehow readapted uh, at every iteration. And therefore the meaning of this case, in this case is the coherence temperature of the, uh, uh, of the metallic solution of your DMFT calculation. And this is somehow, I think a good, uh, so picture of what we can do for, uh, or what we can understand by reading the physics from the two particle quantities, which explain uh, what is the physical origin of the vertex divergences as they are originated from the, uh, from the um, transfer of information from the spin to the charge channel in the presence of the local moment formation and its condo screening. And now the question is also about the time because uh, I also uh, uh, a second part where I could uh, illustrate to you uh, if there are so if there are relevant physical consequences uh, by going beyond this purely local description. But uh, so uh, it's already my time is already gone. So maybe this we can postpone to another uh, to another. Uh, um, uh, session. Let me just check that it's possible to find this, uh, so to say, uh, this uh, this kind of uh, um, um, interesting, uh, um, so to say, implication of these divergences. But in order to see this, you have to go beyond the purely local physics that I discussed so far. You have, in, in some sense, if you remain confined to the local part of your problem, uh, of course, you, you get uh, your uh, beta spatial equation back and forth, and you can identify the origin, but you cannot get much more. But if you, if you, if you include this information in the beta spatial equation of a non-local problem, then it's clear that uh, the effective interaction that you have there, this was also noted by the group of, of Tremblay, 2019, well, if the vertex function diverges, then this vertex function, uh, so to say, becomes, um, uh, so to say, uh, maybe interpreted in terms of an effective interaction. And if you, if you change the sign of this effective interaction by crossing a divergence line, you can have that uh, an effective interaction which is repulsive may become attractive. And this can open, of course, uh, the, the door for a a many, many interesting scenario which can only happen in the non-perturbative regime. But I think uh, I have to check the chat Um, and um, I, I will ask the organizer uh, if I have time to, to say something more about this or if I have to stop here and we can discuss about the, only the first part of the talk. Maybe, maybe you can see if there are some questions on this part. Yes. And if there are not, we can, uh, yes. we can go further. I don't know if people have questions. <clears throat> Otherwise we continue and we, we take the... Uh, maybe one short question if yes. you can. Um, so, um, would you say that uh, one has to distinguish uh, frequencies below and above u? At some stage, you you made this distinction. Uh, for the, for the Hubbard case, for the Hubbard atom, yes. So somehow uh, we have even a, a sort of it's not actually a u is square root of three times u over two, as far as I remember, but it's order of u, so to say. It's really definitely order of u. I think the square root of three comes from a, a spin consideration because this is really the, the, the image of the, of the local moment. And so the factor of three depends on the three, three spin component, but, but uh, it's definitely of order of u. So if, uh, I, uh, if I, let's say, try to go back and show you the result that we have at, uh, uh, for instance, at, in this case, you see that, that, oh, sorry, that the scale in the, where, where you really flip the sign of the eigenvalue is really of order of you. So, uh, in, in the, in the, in the, in the Hubbard atom, this is, this is, this is, it should be like this because the suppression of your charge fluctuation occurs when, when the, 
double occupied and, and a non-occupied site are no longer thermally activated. And this, this means that the, the temperature scale should go below the value of U. And this, and this happens, of course, in the Matsubara, when, when the corresponding Matsubara frequency is of that order. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, by doing this, every time that you flip another, another frequency, you get, uh, of course, another divergence. And also in the, in, the, in the language of Walter, another crossing with another physical solution. And that, that's why my answer for the upper atom, if you reduce the value of, of the temperature, uh, of course, the, you will have infinite many much better frequency which enter the U criterion, and therefore, and therefore, the things are not going to be better. Uh, in the in the Anderson impurity model, instead, uh, since you somehow in the Anderson impurity model, uh, 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 I mean, uh, create a sort of uh, mitigation of the local moment effect at low frequency, then you mitigate a bit the divergence line. In the atomic limit, there is no no condo screening, and so things becomes worse and worse. Okay, thank you. Do you have other questions? Okay, Alessandro, then maybe you can continue a little bit. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll just close the door because uh, the, 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 I'm a bit cold. Also, um, let's, we were here, I think. So as I say, there was this observation by the group of, of Tremblay and also by ourselves that, of course, if you cross a divergence line and you change the sign of the eigenvalues, of course, this means that you are manipulating the sign of the effect interaction in the beta separator equation, and this may have important consequences. Uh, and in particular, for us, it was interesting to look at the compressibility, the isothermal compressibility of the Hubbard models of the MFT, because, uh, first of all, because this quantity is really one that you can get from the lattice, so the non-local beta subpeter equation of the MFT, where, however, the local vertex provides the input. And second, because it was already known in the field that the, the compressibility tends, which is the, char, the uniform charge response of the system, tends to increase in the proximity of the mode transition in the MFT and actually even diverges in some cases. So it was a promising candidate. And the other advantage was that in the MFT, uh, at least perfectly in the beta lattice system, but also very good, uh, in a very good approximation in other, in other lattices, you can recast your beta subpoint equation in, a, in an analytical form, very easy to understand. So uh, you see here that uh, we have the local vertex and the, and the local vertex, sorry, here, and the, and the bubble term. And then if, uh, if you consider the, the, the two bubble terms together, so to say the local and the non-local one, the sum of the two is very easy. It's a constant times the identity in frequency space. And this makes the, the somehow the, the treatment of the, of the divergences and the, of the eigenvalue very, very transparent. Because uh, if, you, if you then for the, uh, for the local susceptibility, for the generalized one, use the spectral representation in terms of eigenvalue and eigenvector that we defined before, well, the final expression from your uh, conductivity becomes this very compact expression here in blue, where you have the inverse, the sum of overall, uh, overall eigenvalues of the inverse of the eigenvalues times a constant, all to the minus one where W is the weight that comes from the eigenvector. And if we do so, it's clear that uh, if your eigenvalue lambda becomes negative, then there is the possibility that it becomes so negative that uh, reaches or that uh, compensate the positive constant here, you get a zero and so you get a divergence of the isothermal compressibility. That means you get a phase separation of your system. Uh, to second order phase instability. In particular, uh, so to say, uh, since, uh, the, the, however, the lambda can become negative only after having crossing uh, cross a, a, a vertex divergences, of course, uh, it, it, this means that, uh, that uh, you cannot uh, 
reach this kind of instability if you are in the perturbative regime. You are on the other side of, of the world. And actually, then we try to see uh, if this is was really the case. So first, we consider the, Hubbard, the, the phase diagram of the Hubbard model at our feeling, and we perform calculation very close to the, uh, to the tip of the MOT Hubbard metal insulator transition. And then it, we get an interesting result that was confirmed independently by a very nice calculation by uh, Eric Van Loon, Friedrich Klein, and Andre Katanin, but from another perspective. Uh, and the result was that indeed, at the critical endpoint of the mock transition, the condition for letting the, um, uh, the, the compressibility to diverge was fulfilled. Actually, at that point. However, we didn't see any divergence of the, of the compressibility because at particles of symmetry, the weight associated to this expression was exactly zero because of the particle of symmetry. So the eigenvector were uh, anti-symmetric in frequency and therefore, although the conditions were realized, uh, we couldn't see anything. But then it was clear where we had to look for. It was enough to go out of a feeling and, and get rid of this uh, perfect uh, condition of particle symmetry and try to see what happens. And this is what we did. We, we, this is the phase diagram of the Abbar model again. On the, uh, on the plane on the bottom, you see again the half filling condition with the mock transition. And then we see this line or dotted point here, which represent what is known to be a line of uh, of this separation in dynamical field theory. And what, and, and what we did was to make calculation to go just slightly above this line. And by doing this, what we get was this, this result, where we calculate both the, the one particle definition of the, of the isothermal compressibility and the one coming from the Bitter circuitry equation. And we see that they, they agree pretty well numerically. And also that they show that at a certain point, there was a strong enhancement of the isothermal compressibility, lambda shaped, which is a typical in, int for a, a second order phase separation or phase transition, sorry, occurring at a given value of the chemical potential. 1.1. And then the question was, was this related to, the, to what we were saying? And in order to do so, what we did was to decompose the analytic expression that we have by separating the, the values of the different eigenvalues coming from these eigenvalues. The, the first one, the red, was uh, uh, coming from, uh, from the lowest eigenvalue. The second, the orange, the, sec the second lowest, and then we have the rest. And then if we do the, the analysis of these eigenvalues, we see that uh, for the lowest eigenvalues and for, for the eigenvectors, and we see that for the lowest eigenvalues, the maximum of K was achieved for essentially where the minimal value of this second value, which was negative, was achieved. And actually where this was actually almost identical to the condition, to the constant that we defined before. At the same time, out of our feeling, the, for the parameter which corresponded to the maximum of, of, of the isothermal compressibility, this time the weight was also negative. So it was no longer killed by the symmetry. And therefore, if we put the ingredient together, we see that we have a contribution which is negative and even diverging coming from the eigenvalue and a contribution which is negative coming from the weight. And altogether, this uh, creates a very strong enhancement of the uniform chart response. And this can be interpreted physically as a sort of attraction. And uh, the smoking gun was even that we can really uh, make a quantitative analysis of the composition of the different points of the phase diagram in terms of the, of the first, the second, and the rest part of the eigenvalues and see that uh, at the maximum, 
the first eigenvalue was essentially, so the one that was negative and which was uh, driving the non-perturbative physics was actually also driving the divergence of the compressibility. And you can also see that uh, why at all feeling this is killed by symmetry, as I said before, it, the shape, essentially the shape of the red component, which comes from the non-perturbative eigenvalue, essentially mimic the shape of the uh, of the term of the isothermal conductivity. So it's really driving the physical response. And this was also confirmed by a fully co-resolved analysis of the DMT result, uh, where we see that the full momentum dependence static response in, as a function of, of momentum as the maximum at q equal to zero for this parameter set. And this maximum of q equal to zero were essentially given only by the contribution of the first eigenvalue, while the rest were essentially given an even opposite trend, which was very close to the one that you expect at our film. And this somehow uh, bring us to the sort of uh, intuitive explanation. So if you have a very strong repulsion in your system, you can get this drives local moment formation and vertex divergences. And in the charge channel, this vertex divergence corresponds to an effective attraction. Therefore, you can get something which looks to a phenomenology which is typically associated to attractive interaction, like a phase separation. This is uh, the, the obvious analogy is the liquid vapor coexistence, where, you, where you, you can separate the liquid and the gas part of the system because of the of the essentially typically the Van der Waals interaction. In this case, however, the attraction is provided by non-perturbative sign flip of the too strong repulsive interaction. So too strong attraction, too strong, too strong repulsion leads eventually to an attraction. Uh, and the question is what happens in the other channel? Well, in the other channel, we have similar expressions. And, uh, uh, However, the difference at the level of DMT that the sign here between the eigenvalues, log eigenvalues term and the constant is the opposite. For instance, in the case of a charge density wave of a S, S wave superconductivity or antiferromagnetism. And this leads to a very interesting observation. If you consider the local eigenvalues of our problem, then it's clear that uh, you can obtain some, uh, so to say, uh, instability, thermodynamic instability uh, in the charge density wave in the uh, S wave sector or in the antiferromagnetic sector. If, uh, so to say, the maximal positive eigenvalue becomes equal to the constant here. And this may happen even in a, in, in a perturbative technique. On the other hand, there are other so to say, um, transition, which are belongs to channel in which the sign, the sign here is plus, and they can be only triggered if you, if the minimal eigenvalue lambda becomes equal to minus this constant. And this, this uh, second kind of phase transition in this context are fully non-perturbative. This is really a fully non-perturbative path, which, uh, which allows additional transition with respect to the perturbative ones. And with this, I think for the moment I'm, I'm, I'm finished. So this is, of course, there is still a lot of to be done. This is just a first progress in this direction. We have seen that if we, if we make an effort to, to better read the physics from the two particle quantities, we can explain the origin of the vertex divergence in the easiest model, the anderson pure model, and we also get uh, as, a, as a sort of uh, side effect, uh, a new uh, criterion for determining the cone temperature. At the same time, this vertex divergence, since they are sign flip in the beta sapeter equation, they may, uh, so to say, they may the trigger force of, uh, 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 so to say, completely different path to get, in, to get a phase transition in the non-perturbative regime. And the obvious outlook at this point is that uh, this physics that uh, in, the, in the case of the local 
model is 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 driven by the formation of of the local moment and the, its image on the chart sector in the non uh, so may may have some consequences if one extend the the, the, the description to non-local problem because the role of the local moment might be played by antiferromagnetic fluctuation or in multi-orbital model where the local moment formation may be even enhanced by the effect of the local Unz exchange with a lot of interesting possible uh, connection with uh, the non-perturbative description of uh, cuprates and iron-based superconductors. But we are still far from that. And with this, uh, I would like to thank all of you for the attention. Sorry for being late. And OK, I'm open to, to get other questions. Thank you, Alessandro. Um, so I don't know if there are questions uh, in the audience. There's nothing in the chat. Oh, sorry. No, it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, I can ask maybe one thing, if there's no one else. Um, if you think uh, of sim simply using something like a Lehman representation, right? You yes. have your response function, you have your states, okay? And you would get a divergence when the first excited state crosses the ground state. I mean, you, you have a gap between mm -hmm. the ground state and the first excited state, mm -hmm. and then you you somehow tune your system and you yes. lower the excited state and you cross the ground state. You yes. get and this tells you that the system is not happy with its ground state, right? Mm -hmm. As a new ground state. Yes. Okay. Is there more to it than just this? Is I don't know uh, because uh, um, the point is uh, that um, somehow in, in, in this case, uh, so we essentially, we, we see that uh, there is a spectrum here, no? So actually in this slide here. So if you, if you think, for the moment, we, we can only deal with the purely local physics. Mm -hmm. uh, so to so say, uh, of course, you have to get the divergence somewhere. But uh, the obvious way to getting this would be that you increase what I would have expected. You increase your largest value of the eigenvalues. And this, is this, which is maybe even the local moment. And this at a certain point can trigger the divergence. This is, for instance, what happens in random phase. But on the other end, it's also possible. So depending on, on what you are looking, or which kind of uh, instability you are, uh, you are looking at, uh, there is also a second possibility. That, because for other sectors, uh, also the, the other extreme of your eigenvalues spectrum, for the local part only, May may have uh, some consequences, and this is and and this is you cannot get this without having a perturbative theory. In other way, if you if you do a random phase calculation, or uh, a parquet approximation calculation, or FRG calculation with truncation, or uh, so to say uh, whatsoever that uh, it does not include from the beginning this non-local physics. This part of the spectra below the negative part it cannot be reached for so, production. And so you, you will never get this, this kind of uh, phase separation uh, attached to the mode transition that we have on the left. So th there are some, some phase transition that can be treated. So the phase transition here are triggered by the stream of the eigenvalue spectrum, but uh, the, the upper extreme is what you can get also in the perturbative models, but the lower, since it has to become negative than zero, you cannot get it uh, without fully taking into account the physics of the local moment formation, the atomic, the upper atom or whatsoever. But, but if, I, if I try to link it to, to this idea that you would simply have many body states, suppose you can calculate the many body states mm -hmm. and you have instability when the ground state is no longer the long. The, yes. Yes. This holds for. Mm -hmm. I, and, I, I, and how you would calculate it, right? Yes. How you could possibly calculate yes. it implicitly? I, I would say that it, uh, really the many body state 
of course you have to get a crossing to get the organ state instable. No, is it is, a, is what, what is driving this? Yeah, so, and is it is there a difference whether the excited state comes down or the ground state goes up? I mean, oh, that's a good question. Uh, that that I, I maybe maybe it's associated with the, the, the difference between the two cases. Uh, I I cannot answer at the moment. Okay. It might be it might be that's a, that's a good hint. So uh, I I cannot so. In some sense, this is this is really a sort of, uh, uh, so to say, try to understanding uh, the, the 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 role played by the purely local physics in triggering the uh, instabilities. It's not the full many body state. Of course, of course. It's, it's, and and this should be reflected in some differences in how the crossing occurs. I didn't. I never talk about this. Hint. Maybe maybe it's worth to have a look at, at, at this. Okay. But I cannot answer now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have other questions? I think we were also a bit tired after two hours. <laughs> Sorry for being late. So, but as as in Italian, uh, this is typical. So. No, it's not true. <laughs> we are in perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then uh, I don't know, maybe we could uh, close here if there are no other questions and uh, no discussion. Maybe we can thank uh, Walter and Alessandro 